Yeah, good evening, it's Charlie ZL2 CTM. Well, I'm back off that trip and I've had a bit of an opportunity to play around with the amplifier. Um, thanks to everybody who uh, sent in comments, that was uh, really useful. And um, while I was away, I had a bit of a chance to sort of have a bit of a think about uh, where I wanted to go with this and, and what I was sort of thinking. Um, I've made a few changes which I'll go through now and then look at um, some of the maths behind it and then uh, crank up the SIG gen and, um, and see how it works. So what I've done for a start, um, I've taken away that centre tapped uh, input transformer and instead replaced it with, I was actually after the junk box, uh, a 10 turn, but I found one which was actually 12 turns in the end. Um, that's a, a T50-43 with 12 turns of bifiler wound um, cores. Um, the input side goes between uh, the input from the SIG gen to earth, that's the green one, and then the red output wires uh, just go directly to the inputs to the two um, LD MOSs. So uh, it's not set up for any kind of impedance transformation. So effectively then the 50 ohms from the SIG gen is then being presented across um, the two LD MOS devices. Um, I've taken away for, for experimenting uh, the two uh, capacitors that were going to the inductors that were going to earth and that just goes straight through now through a 100 nanofarad capacitor directly, uh, directly through to the gates of the two LD MOSs. Um, I also thought um, that some of the input RF that was coming in here was being lost through the biasing network for the two gates. So I elected to put in a couple of simple RFCs purely for experimenting to see uh, what effect that would have. Um, that's a T50-43 uh, um, uh, 37-43 sorry my apologies uh, the smaller one uh, with 10 turns so just 10 turns on, on that particular toroid there and then connected directly to the resistor going through to the, uh, the two variable pots for adjusting the, uh, the bias um, in that particular configuration it takes uh, roughly 2.5 volts less input to get the same output so for the sake of uh, a couple of simple RFCs, you minimize uh, the, the requirements for the driver stage in terms of uh, what voltage it needs to provide with this. So I think at this stage of the game, I might just leave those in for the sake of it. Um, I fully acknowledge that these two uh, heat sinks here uh, are not the right size. They actually do quite a good job. Um, but it was purely just to get something on, just to, to dissipate some of the heat so I could continue on playing around. Um, I wouldn't have those on for a big long rag chew, but for the CW uh, testing that's going on, uh, they rem they're they pretty good actually. I'm, I'm actually quite surprised how much heat they do dissipate. So they're just sitting directly on top of the two LD MOS devices uh, with a little bit of heat sink compound there. But um, that's, that's pretty good. And like I say, unlike before where it instantly got hot, now I can run it at CW for um, for several minutes and it's and it's really uh, not a problem at all. Um, the other change on the output side, uh, initially I had a single turn on this output transformer on, we'll call this the primary, um, and then I had, uh, I was playing around with two, um, with two and three turns on the secondary. Uh, as we'll see in the uh, the calcs, in the end I went for a a, a transformation or a, um, a turns ratio of one. Um, and I initially had one single turn on the primary and a single turn on the secondary. But I elected to, because I had sufficient size of the holes here, to go for two turns. So it's through, it's two turns on the primary and two turns on the secondary, uh, just to uh, reduce some of the losses in that. Um, so, so uh, yeah, so. Um, so that means coming back through the transformer back into the amplifier, uh, that's a, a 50 ohm half wave low pass filter for 40 meters. Um, if people wish I can uh, put up the numbers for that and the design calculations for that particular filter. So that 50 ohms has now been transformed through that transformer. So we've got 50 ohms uh, here, which has then effectively been divided into two uh, across each individual device. So from a maths point of view, why I settled on that particular design there, what I elected to do, because things were getting a little bit warm of, of uh, per device now, I've elected to de-rate those two LD MOSs. They're rated for 10 watts, so uh, 
in the United Cider for playing around, I'll just rate those at 5 watts. Um, and also saw quite interesting, um, you recall the the resistance required for a single-ended device or per device is RL VCC squared um, over two times your desired power for that particular device. Um, I saw, and it actually works out to be pretty pretty close actually to what I'm seeing here in the shack, um, de-raising the VCC by 0.85, so 85% of VCC squared times two times your desired power. Um, and I've, that's actually, worked, like I say, working out to be pretty close to what I'm seeing. So having said that, so it's now 0.85 times, and that's the other change too I should have said, um, I'm also playing around with uh, an old laptop power supply, so rather than providing this with 13.8 volts, um, I'm now providing with 18.5. So this is 18.5, it's good for about 3.5 amps if I recall, um, and just a, a way of trying to increase a little bit the, uh, the VCC for the amplifier. I'm still looking around for 24 volts and I'm sort of half tempted to go and buy another little motorbike battery and then run two of them in series just to keep things nice and simple. So two 12 volt batteries in series uh, would be quite good just to, for playing around with this. So anyway, so uh, so coming back to this, so it was 0.85 times 18.5 squared times two times five watts comes out 24.7, which is pretty close to uh, 25 ohms. So therefore across the primary of that um, transformer there, and I, I know i am probably got the terminology back to front, but we'll call the white side the primary. So across that side there, I've got 2 times 24.7, 49.5 or close to 50 ohms. Hence the reason why I settled on an N of 1. Um, and like I mentioned before, I played around with 1 to 1, uh, 2 to 2, 3 to 3, and in fact I didn't actually get to 3 to 3, I just decided to settle on 2 to 2. And that's what you see here. So two turns with the white, two turns on the brown. Um, from a biasing point of view, uh, these two LD MOSs uh, can have a maximum VGS, uh, the voltage between the gate and the source, um, of 15 volts, plus or minus 15 volts. Um, and what in the end what I did is I uh, elected to play around with the, the quiescent current through these two devices and settled on around 100, uh, 100 milliamps per device, uh, which works out to be at this point here uh, a DC voltage of around 4.4 volts, which is pretty well halfway in that range where it says this device here starts to conduct between 4 and 5. So like I say, 100 milliamps per device uh, was the quiescent current that I decided to, to put through this. Um, and we mentioned the T1 on the input as being a, a T50-43 with those 12 uh, by filer turns. Okay, so um, having said that, let's just now uh, turn it on and we'll have a look at uh, the gain and how it performs. So we've got the SIG Gen set up there. Um, I'm no sure setting up for 10 volts peak to peak coming in at 7.1 megs. Uh, we've got the scope there and then just above it the power meter. So if we were to, just leave it sitting there, key it. So we're now providing uh, the VCC to it. Uh, and we can see there that we're getting a nice clean sine wave uh, and getting a good 10 watts, uh, a good 10 watts out. Um, it will go slightly higher than that if I was to increase um, the 10 volts here. Uh, it get up, gets up to a good around 14 uh, watts, but I've decided to keep it at 10 watts um, as, a, as an aiming point for the driver stage to coming in. So if the maths is right then, we should have uh, if 10 volts is coming in and it's a 50 ohm SIG gen, then that should be providing then uh, around 250 milliwatts. Uh, we're getting 10 watts out, so 10 log 10 watts over 0.25 watts gives us 16 dB gain uh, for the amplifier. In terms of straight out efficiency, um, the DC current coming in uh, is uh, 0.7 apps uh, at 10 watts. Um, so, so 0 0.7 times 18.5 volts gives us 13 watts, so 13 watts coming in for DC power, 10 watts coming out, so 100 times uh, 10 divided by 13 gives us 77% efficiency. Um, I think that's about right, but uh, like I say, not too bad. Um, in terms of heat-wise, it's been sitting there running out so DC for quite some time, and you know, I'm pushing my fingers on there, and certainly no... Uh, no burns, which is good. 
so that's not too bad um, you know, and like I say I totally acknowledge that they are the wrong size and I, I will just turn it off because that's a, a key down now for going on probably a good minute um, like I say it's warm but it's not it's not burning that's for sure uh, so anyway so I think that's just an update on where we're getting to um, quite interesting certainly much better with the uh, the heat sinks on that was certainly good um, I think that transformer there um, is a better match now with that 50 ohms coming from our filter back through to the amplifier that seems to suit this quite well and uh, that trifile it's again bifile wound uh, transformer on the input uh, with no impedance transformation uh, seems to match too quite well to the input of these two devices um, I haven't played around with any other kind of impedance transformation um, well that's actually not quite correct when I did actually have the center tapped transformer I was playing around with um, some other windings uh, but in the end sort of settled on this one which seemed to I think provide um, slightly better performance um, I haven't played around with making that a T37-43 uh, like I say when I opened up the junks box that was the first one that sort of came to mind I thought um, close enough is good enough so uh, that's what I've got there um, I think that pretty well covers uh, all I was going to talk about so I think at this stage of the game I'm going to leave this as is um, I'll leave it with the 18.5 volts uh, VCC coming in of interest sake there those are two uh, one ohm resistors I've got in parallel um, that I was using to measure the voltage drop across that to determine how much current was going through it um, I've mentioned that before in a previous video um, I'm a bit reluctant to have uh, any current going through the two multimeters especially with these devices here if, um, you know, if they short circuit then um, I don't particularly want to go uh, blowing the fuse uh, in the multimeter so I find that's just a better way to work out the current bit of ohms law but you can determine then what the current is uh, by measuring the voltage drop across that um, so getting back to uh, next steps so next steps now will be to uh, to look at the driver amplifier for this um, so as we've seen I need to provide um, around 10 volts peak to peak um, so yeah so um, I'll need to give now a bit of a thought about if I was to turn the light back on again unfortunately it sort of ricochets off the copper so we we'll need to work out in terms of the actual amplifier, it's, uh, say again, the main radio itself, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, is how much additional gain I need now after that dual purpose RF amplifier that's now serving as both an antenna amplifier as well as a, uh, a pre driver. Uh, we need to work out uh, how much additional amplification is now needed from the output of that on transmit uh, and the input mm -hmm. to, the, uh, to the power amplifier. Um, I haven't started to look at that, so that'll be the next steps. Anyway, um, I won't um, won't labour this any further. Um, I think I'm now starting to ramble, um, so uh, I think we'll leave it at that. Okay, yeah, I'll say 73s, and um, like I say, it seems to be working quite well. And uh, quite, I mean, you know, those two devices there didn't really cost a lot of money at all. I um, can't remember how much they were, but they were certainly pretty uh, cost-effective. Anyway, I'll say 73s, and uh, happy soldering.